You just don't like to show the chin. No one has seen my chin in like 10 years. 2010, 20, the beginning of the forever scarf. I've been wearing a scarf since 2010. It was part of a transition that I made. I went from starving myself and making myself throw up as a teenager in an attempt to be skinny because that's what I thought would make me a powerful and valuable person to trying to change my perception of what makes a woman valuable and powerful. I wanted to try and accept myself the way I was and to put less value on shrinking and being small and to stop associating my worth with how much I was desired by men. So I stopped starving myself and I changed the media I consumed. So I stopped ingesting anti-fat ideas and I started wearing whatever I wanted to wear, which were clothes that hid my body. The further away I got from my eating disorder and the mentality that I had that created it, the fatter I became. <laughs> Some people are just born to have a double chin. And I was born to multiply my chins. So as I swelled, so did my second chin. My mom is skinny. All of her kids from her previous marriage are skinny. My dad was fat. And luckily, I inherited that fat genetic vibe. Also, pizza is delicious. And I love cooking and food and eating way too much. So all of these things combined equal a fat bitch. I gotta be honest, um, being the only fat person in a family that looks like they jumped out of an American Eagle commercial is a curious position to be in. My dad died in 2014. So my fat comrade is gone. I mean, obviously he was much more than a fat comrade, but it was very comforting to be able to bond over eating pie filling straight out of the can, as opposed to sitting awkwardly and not saying anything while your family talks about eating nothing but juice for 30 days straight. Anyways, part of me trying to accept myself more involved accepting my insecurities and that I like to hide my body. Part of it is shame because deep down there's a piece of me that feels like my body is wrong and it shouldn't be shown. That's the message I was raised with. That's the message I fed myself for a long time and it's still there. I also hate being sexualized. That's a layered one. There are, there are different reasons. Partly shame, partly abuse. Partly self-loathing. Wow, I'm so fun. I'm so fun and I love being the funnest person in the world and I love being flippant and I love being lighthearted. Anyways, in accepting my insecurities, I thought, why can't I wear a scarf all the time? It makes me feel prettier. It makes me feel more like myself. Like I'm taking the power away from this double chin that I could be judged for by people who hate fat possibly my own family. Like they're warm and accepting people, but they do constantly talk about getting smaller. So I do feel more comfortable around them when I'm hidden. <sighs> so I took the scarf that I bought for autumn in 2010 and I didn't take it off for six months and no one's seen my neck since then. It's both freeing and sad. Sad that I don't just accept myself fully and accept the judgment that I might face. And then freeing because it's actually okay to make yourself feel comfortable. And I do feel comfortable. I, I don't think about how ugly I might look if someone takes a picture from a low angle. And I don't second guess what my body looks like when I run or when I move or when I dance because I genuinely feel safe and protected in what I wear. And that's a liberating feeling. Yes, in an ideal world, I wouldn't need to wear a scarf for nine years to feel liberated. And <laughs> I do think it would be good for me to take it off. 
So I intend to. When I decide something, I do it. So I've decided that if I ever get to <laughs> 1, million <subscri> 1 million subscribers, my celebration will be taking off my scarf. <laughs> this may be insufferable. This may be <laughs> a disgusting ploy to try to ask people to subscribe. And 100% on some Slytherin level it is. It's also a way for me to do something that I could try to run away from forever. A million subscribers might seem empty or not like a big deal to some people. But to me, a girl who three years ago had no idea that you could just genuinely express yourself creatively and have it be your career, I would have thrown up <laughs> in the best way if I knew this life was possible. <sighs> this might be weird <laughs> and lame and iconic and gross, but it's how I want to do it. I will take off my scarf for the first time in nine years if I ever reach a million subscribers. <laughs> the things my life has come to. Like, what? The fact that I've worn a scarf for this long and the only way I will allow myself to take it off in public is if I, like, get subscribers. I love being pathetic. I love being pathetic so much. Literally nothing makes me happier. <laughs> People tell me all the time, stop being pathetic. I can't. It's my main personality trait. <laughs> it might be 10 years. It might be 11. It might be never. Either way, it's okay. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons why I feel like I'm not good enough. Why I feel like I'm not worthy. Like I don't matter. But I matter. And I am worthy. Whether I wear a scarf or don't. Whether I'm bangable or not. Whether I'm relevant or not. Whether I'm rich or poor or liked or disliked. My worth comes from the light inside of me that can never be taken away by anything on the outside. And I don't always remember that. But it's always true. Ah. <sighs>